from multiple locations via the miracle of Skype. It's the LTN Hour. Let's talk NASCAR with your host, Todd Bailing. Co-host, Ed Kaluka, Featuring Dangerous Dan Margetta. And Brian Schmidt. LTN is a caller-driven program, and your participation is encouraged by calling 414-421-7901. That's 414-421-7901. Now, the creator and host of the fastest hour in radio, Todd Bailey. Well, I have to admit, the uh, anticipation for today's race at uh, Bristol on the dirt is uh, absolutely incredible. From every corner of the racing universe, everybody's thinking about what's it going to be like at Bristol today. Unfortunately, the weather gods are not on our side. It's looking absolutely terrible weather-wise at Bristol today. Nice to have you join us, Todd Bailing in Phoenix, Arizona, joined by my three partners, beginning with my uh, longest tenured partner, Ed Kaluka of West Bend, Wisconsin. Eddie, um, uh, I hear there's a lot of water on the track. Well, we'll get to that part when we get to Brian, but uh, the rain will stop at about 115, get a little shower about 330, and I've talked to Brian, a dirt expert, on how many days it's going to take to get a racetrack. <laughs> I see. Well, let's go. I tell you what, before we hit Brian, let's go in by tenure. Uh, from uh, St. Francis, Wisconsin, it's our own dangerous Dan Margetta. Hi, Daniel. Hi, good morning. I really feel for NASCAR. You know, they had all the all the hype coming into this deal, and everything was going their way, and then one thing you can't control is the weather, and it just, it just kind of flipped the script on them, and now you got a lot of naysayers out there. But I hope they get it in, because I really want to see this. It's something I've never seen, cup cars on dirt, and I, I think it'd be really cool to get it in. They were talking over and over about, boy, it sure would be nice to get get a lot of moisture in the track. Well, Brian, it sounds like their prayers were answered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you've seen any video from that area today, I mean, it is. You know, being in the public works business that I've been in for 21 years, I know what flooding is like. And when the drains are going backwards, that's a bad thing. And that's kind of what they have going on right now. You can have all the drains in the world, but when the water is higher than your drains, it's not good. And it's Ugh. they got flooding everywhere, so... Even if the rain stops, they got to get the water to, to go away. And then, I mean, it's going to be in the low 40s there once this front goes through. That's not real good drying conditions. Oh, um, <clears throat> so there's a reason, if you're a dirt fan, there's a reason that March and April are, are chronically filled with cancellations on the dirt side of things. Because this type of stuff happens a lot. And, it, you know, it, ha- it happens to all the dirt series all across the country. I don't think there's a March that goes by where at least half their races aren't postponed. So kind of thought this might happen when they scheduled this and it has it was well, what do you uh, think brian is it gonna be monday or tuesday or um, um it, it all depends upon how quickly they can get that water to drain and they can get their the creek back to where it's supposed to be i mean right now the creek is like 16 times the size of where it's supposed to be so all your drains are plugged oh, so the water isn't going anywhere so you know i don't know i don't know the, the topography of that area i don't know how the drains are set up in the track but that's what it's going to that's what's going to be the final thing is if they can get the water to run away and then you can start figuring out what you're going to do to your racetrack. It was, uh, it was exciting right down to the first practice on Friday when they all rolled out. Um, it, a couple of things happened from that practice. One was, I think, uh, unanticipated and that was, um, how quickly they were wearing out right rears. Is that the t- Brian? Does that happen on dirt very often? That one tire will will uh, wear down so much quicker. Yeah, I mean, it last last week when they ran the super late models there, uh, those guys because the way those cars are set up, their right front tires were wearing out, and it has to do with the, the softness of the tire you run. Uh, most dirt series, you have multiple different compounds you can choose from, and you can take that gamble depending upon how long the feature is. If you have the softer tire, you're going to go faster, quicker, but will it last? Harder tire, you're not going to be so good at the beginning, and but you'll be able to last till the end. So I don't know what they're running for a tire compound there, but yeah, it was very dry, and that clay has a lot more sand in it, which is grit. So it's kind of like running sandpaper over rubber, Ugh. and it, it'll wear them off. And that's I think the, what they're uh, doing. <laughs> the old stages. Now I say old stages because they've changed it. It was supposed to be stages 75 
and 150, and then the last segment of 100 laps to the end of this 250-lap race. They have now changed it. We have a competition caution at 50, a stage at 100, another competition caution at 150, another stage at 200, and then it's a 250-lap race. So basically, you're going to have to make your tires last for 50 laps, right? I Larry, I We've been texting back and forth with Larry McReynolds this morning, and what he had texted me was that they're going to stop every 50 laps and take a look at the tires at lap 200 to see if they can leave them on. So if they're not wearing like they did in practice, they might just go ahead and tell them, leave those tires on to the end? I guess that would be the opinion. I think it depends on the racetrack, right? I mean, if you have a dry, yeah. slick track, you're going to burn your tires off. If you have a hammer-down track like they started to try to start yesterday, where it's it's more wet and, and tacky, you're not going to have as much tire wear. Yeah, and it's going to have to. It's going to depend on when they run this race. So Friday's weather was like 70 degrees, sunny, and, and warm out. You know, now if you look at the forecast, you know, if if they're able to do this thing later tonight, it'll be nighttime and it'll be 40 degrees. Your track's not going to dry out to the extent that it did on Friday. So you're not you're not going to know. You're not going to know what your tires are going to do until you start racing, and you're not going to know, depending upon when it is in the race itself, the first 50 to 100 laps, the track might be moist enough where you're not going to burn off your tires. By lap 200, then you may be having some more tire wear. So it's a guessing game. Alex Bowman went out in the first practice and and just absolutely was up on the cushion, never lifted. It seemed like, I mean, it was it looked like a beautiful dirt car lap. But he was one of the first ones to wear out that tire. So all of a sudden now, you have to change your entire approach to the race where it might be better off not having a car that's going to spin the tires and just uh, uh, fiddly around for how many laps until you start taking it seriously, either at the end of segments or at the end of the race. Um, could it turn into that? It's only a half-mile track. How? How easy is it to be a lap traffic, Brian? Yeah, that's the other thing. How quickly you get lapped. We, there's a race on the Lucas Oil Series that every year has the same situation. It's the topless 100 in Batesville, Arkansas. It's always 100 degrees. The track is abrasive. And every year, nobody's able to go 100 laps in their tires. But it, they don't stop for that. It's just a matter of when a caution comes out, when do you want to come in and change your tires? And I know mm. one year, Jared Landers kept racing and kept going and kept going and kept going. And, and finally, with like... 25 to go he went in and changed his tires everybody else had already done it he was able to charge through the field and win the race because he had huh. the freshest tires on so it's, it's not unheard of it's just dirt cars usually don't run more than about 100 laps other than the big block modified at syracuse they used to run like 300 or 200 laps <laughs> oh, but God. there too they change tires quite often also now this has really screwed up the uh, the show that they were planning on putting on, where we were going to have uh, heat races and passing points to set lineups and all that sort of thing. And uh, they had already did they draw? I think they drew for starting positions in those heat races. Some of the back markers uh, are being driven by by dirt specialists, like Chris Windham, for instance. He he's in a car that isn't uh, necessarily fast, but he was going to be at the front of his heat. And uh, there's a, a very good possibility that Chris Windham uh, was going to start towards the beginning of this, towards the front of the field at this race. Unfortunately, they're going to go to. Uh, points or not even points, Ed. What was the? Uh, was it from a practice? No, they're no, going with yeah. this typical no, metrics Brian, deal, right? Ed? No, no, no. They took the practice times from hmm. the first two practices, and they formed the lineup off the first two practices. Well, Kyle Larson was scheduled to start from the pole, but by now you've heard they had to do an engine change in that Hendrick car. So Kyle Larson, who was the favorite, by the way, in Vegas, I saw two, uh, 275, meaning 2.75 to 1 odds to win the thing, is going to start now from the rear. And uh, I'll back with all those specialists, those dirt track specialists that are in these turd cars. So he's it's going to be an <laughs> I, I don't know what to expect. I really don't. I, I do not think that just because Kyle Larson is starting in the back, we need to cross him off the list. He is uh, definitely uh, going to be one of the guys today. You can count on it. We'll tell you more about the race and take your calls 
at 414-421-7901 right after these. It's a red, white, and blue weekend of family fun as Road America hosts the NASCAR Cup Series July 1st through the 4th in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Four huge days of stock cars featuring the NASCAR Cup, Henry 180 Xfinity, and Trans Am Series. Camp on site and catch every lap. Enjoy fan activities including autograph sessions and free family fun zone and free admission for you 16 and under. Get your printed home tickets today before they sell out at RoadAmerica.com. That's RoadAmerica.com. Come for the experience. Stay for the race. Road America, your national park of speed. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs. All backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company in the heart of Wisconsin is out fitted with the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at Wagner Auto Motive.com. It's Bristol. Start your engine! And it's on dirt. Is it going to be wet and fast? Is it going to be slick and slow? It's hard to really make any predictions. Uh, so many unknowns. You know, I think it's going to be a little bit of a wild card for everybody. It's going to be different and unique. Something totally different. So it's going to be a fun weekend regardless though how it goes. It's going to be incredible. Cup Cars on Dirt. All the action today, starting at 1.30 on Milwaukee's home for NASCAR. The Big 920 and Big920.com. Now, that coverage at 1.30 uh, is going to be, you know, we're going to talk about how fun it's going to race on dirt and all that sort of thing. Uh, it's going to be on Fox today. You should be able to see it on Channel 6. However, because it is going to be delayed for sure, it's going to take a while. It'll probably not end up on Fox. They'll do pre-race stuff and interviews and that sort of thing. Um, my guess is we're going to see it on Fox Sports 2. Now, that's just a guess. Some systems have Fox Sports 2. Some don't. I know in, uh, in DirecTV, it's way up in the 600s. It's hard uh, sometimes to find. But we don't know exactly what the plan is. You'll have to pay attention. But it is going to be at least rain delayed today, as uh, we, might, uh, we might expect. All right. Uh, let's straighten something out. The lineup today was set by the qualifying metrics based on race finish from Atlanta, the oh, points okay. position, and the fastest lap after rain forced the cancellation of the heat races. So that was one of the factors, Ed, uh, was practice at uh, Bristol, but fastest the finish from Atlanta. The fastest race lap from Atlanta. That's the, and the fastest race lap. Because lap of the race. fact that they canceled the yes. heat races. Okay. Yes. I got it. All right. Um, Larry from Pewaukee, patiently waiting to patiently talk to us. Waiting. Larry, you're our first caller. You're Let's first talk caller. NASCAR. Hey, good morning, fellas. I, I may have a bad connection, and if so, just let me know, and I'll hang up. Okay. But uh, this cool. may be far-fetched, but possible. But to finish up today, uh, the way I looked at it, I, I believe that uh, there's, there's 39 cars that are qualified. And thir all 36 of the charter cars qualified, but three of them have ringer drivers, uh, Chris Windham, Stuart Friesen, and Shane Dalibet. Now, just just say that uh, something crazy happens and one of those three guys wins the race. Yeah. Uh, will they be, will they, uh, be uh, uh, eligible for the playoffs? If you have to finish uh, in the top 30 in the points, Ed, right? Yeah, yeah, you got to finish top 30 in the points, plus you got to run all the races, and that's where they'll have a problem because they haven't run all the races. They'd have to get a waiver from NASCAR. 
that's not going to happen. Then that's not going to happen. Uh, they would have to then say, okay, well, then I'll run all the races. Uh, let's just say Chris Wyndham uh, would forego his uh, dirt season if he won this thing to run all the rest of the races. That That's unlikely, probably impossible. Um, so, you know, if you win this race, it's going to be a big celebration. Be a and that's about it. Even though there's no way he'd finish in the top 30 in points starting this late. Right. Okay. Does that uh, pretty much cover it, Larry? So so if it's a charter car that wins, it's the driver that actually qualifies for the playoffs and not the car? Yes. Yes. They have owners and driver's points. On the owner's points, they may, you know, that may help them out that way. But uh, as far as for the championship and the playoffs, it's driver's. But help them out, Dan, that doesn't mean anything for the playoffs, does it? No, I mean, they do keep separate owners and, and driver's points. I mean, it, you know, I, I doubt if that car would, when the ringers would win, that they would suddenly, you know, the owner, the rest of the guys in the car would put that car above everybody else in points that way. Um, but for as far as the championship and the playoffs, it's just drivers only. They do keep separate owners' points, but you really don't see a lot about really that. don't see a lot about it. And we had a scenario similar to this a couple of years ago when uh, Justin Haley won that race at Daytona, correct? That 77 car won that race at Daytona, right. and they had nothing to do with the playoffs because they were so far out of it. Oh, got to be in the top 30 in driver points. Gene, is that, uh, I mean, uh, Larry, does that take care of it? It sure does. That's one of the reasons I listen to you guys on Sunday mornings. You get we the great you, stuff. Thanks, Thanks for listening. We appreciate Bye-bye. it. You bet. Uh, if you'd like to call the program, 414-421-7901 to participate in the program. And uh, a quick uh, shout-out to a longtime listener from day one, Gene Miller turning 66 today. I squeezed it in. How about that? Uh, guys, when they had all that tire problem uh, at uh, in, in that practice, they, they, according to Jeff Gordon, uh, right at the end, as they were going off the air, Jeff Gordon said he had heard that they were having meetings with NASCAR and, and Goodyear, and they came up with, we found out later, that they're going to uh, give them an extra set of tires today. Just because 100 laps looked as though it was next to impossible uh, to do. But if you blow on a set of tires, Brian, or if you blow a tire, what's going to happen? They don't have regular pit crews. No, they don't. You'll be changing tires the old school way with some, you know, guy that isn't quite as in shape as the rest of the guys out there and a different jack man. Um, yeah, it's kind of going back to the old school way. I I, I, I like it. I kind of I like the way that's going to be set up. I'm pretty sure, you know, if you blow a tire, you're going to have to come down there. You'll change a tire and the NASCAR will probably have to give you their blessing as to if that was a, you know, acceptable change of tire. But you're probably only going to be able to change that one tire. Uh that's uh, that's pretty interesting. All right. So the uh, controversy suddenly is that, oh, my God, we're running a dirt race with these cars that have windshields. First of all, why is this a, a big controversy suddenly? Because most I don't dirt, know. It, well, dirt, dirt racing doesn't involve windshields uh, normally. Um, the, the way the track was set up yesterday when they sent the trucks out there for that first heat race, that, that track is very similar to what you normally have at a start of a night at a normal dirt track. It, it's going to be muddy. You know, when we're at Plymouth and we run the first heat of the night, we're scraping a lot of mud off the car. You got to put, you know, 10 tear-offs on your, on your helmet there, and it's only a 10-lap heat race. You might go through all of them. That's pretty normal. But, I, I, you know, most of the time when NASCAR is racing out there, the track is really dry, at least at Eldora. Eldora runs a little more sandier, kind of grittier type of dirt. Uh, Springfield and DuCoin, where the ARCA cars run, that's a sandier, grittier type of dirt. This stuff here is that red clay, as sticky as can be. I mean, if you've ever been down to Georgia or, or North Carolina or any of those tracks that have it, I mean, that stuff sticks to your shoes like you wouldn't believe. So it, it's going to be difficult. They're going to have to get the thing dry enough that it won't stick to the windshields. And I, honest, I didn't think about it at all, and I think, honestly, nobody at NASCAR thought about it until they threw the green flag, and then you're like, oh, boy, we have a problem. Ed, back in the day when you were running with the U.S. Stock, US USAC stock cars, when they were running like at DuCoin and Springfield, Illinois, um, you had windshields, didn't you? Sure. The only thing ingenious back then was what kind of apparatus you put behind the radiator, in front of the radiator, between the grill and the radiator, to knock the dirt off. We used to hang chains that would swing back and forth and knock the dirt off. Uh. But everything we did was about what happens to the radiator. And then we'd run a radiator that's a, a thicker core. Uh, in other words, the flutes and the radiator are wider apart on a dirt mm. track. 
It just didn't seem like windshields were a big issue, huh? No, not at all. And, but, and those were one-mile tracks, weren't they? Yeah, but they were, like Brian said, it wasn't this kind of heavy stuff. Yeah, that's true. And you race in summer, probably, not spring. Right. All right. We'll be back. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's sales and service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. Spring is in the air, and PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily. From premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to enviro mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years, PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. This, keep it on the down low here, is the Dan Patrick Show. If I'm a Bears fan, I'd rather have not gone through this that Russell Wilson was considering. I'd rather that I didn't know that to then have this. Because if you're a Bears fan, you realize chances are nobody wants the quarterback you have. You get quarterbacks that nobody else wants. Dan Patrick. The Dan Patrick Show. Weekdays after 8 on the Big 920 and Big920.com. A couple things. Um, there is a, a race going on at Road Atlanta today. I don't know my uh, divisions, Brian. TA2. What the hell is that? Those are the, the Trans Am cars that look a lot more like a like an asphalt super late model. Uh, they're the ones that at Road America, they usually have like 45 or 50 of them. Uh, uh, those aren't the exotic cars. Those are the those are the cool looking ones. All right. Well, uh, our own Sam Mayer went down there to race in that TA2 race at Road Atlanta, and he won the pole. So um, I don't oh. believe it's going to be televised today. But uh, just so you know, Sam is uh, he's he certainly is a uh, he produces, doesn't he? Doesn't matter what he where he goes, he's good. No matter what, and it can't be bad for his career to be doing stuff like this. That's really neat. Ty Majeski won one of those TA2 races about three years ago at Road America. Very cool. I think I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Larson got a sponsor for today's race, Freightliner. If you haven't seen it on the car, looks pretty cool on there. Uh, jumped on board. Uh, it's about time he's going to start attracting sponsors, and uh, Freightliner is the first one to get on board uh, of any consequence. So um, uh, thanks for having the uh, intestinal fortitude to back up a guy like Kyle Larson. I yeah. hope they have a camera on him uh, all day today. Oh, he's yeah. starting in the back. He's coming from the back of the field, and on dirt, that'll be wild to watch. Yeah. Which right there will give you a, a comparison. You know, all, all these backmarker cars that are going to suddenly have good dirt racers in them. Um, I just don't know that their engines are going to be any faster than they are on asphalt. Uh, but you're going to see the best dirt racer alive 
uh, probably the best racer alive going after it from the back of the field. They're, they they got to be smart enough to have a camera on him all race long, don't you think? Oh, I would think so, definitely. <laughs> yeah, and he's going to the back because he overheated his engine in practice on Friday. So they had uh, to change engines out. That was funny. I was listening to him, and he was out there running around, running around, and he says, uh-oh, temp- water temperature's up 385, and there's steam coming out. And that cooked the motor. And that yep. did it, huh? Gee yeah. whiz. Uh, did you realize that caution laps don't count today? I think it's in the between the stages that they don't count. Oh. I mean, if we have a yellow for an incident or something, they'll count those. But I think okay. it's in between the stages. Because sometimes having to get that stage thing settled up, that burns off about like seven or eight laps. I know. It's and ridiculous. With, yeah. But so with something only, I'd like to see at Road America on a road course. And they may they might do that as well, or just you know it won't take as long because they have such a long time for the laps, like on a road course. I'm sure they can get their stuff together pretty quick. I mean, that'd be a good precedent to set the future. Definitely you know, that's course. true. And of course, those stages that's they kill a good, uh, like Dan said, eight to ten laps just puttering around and playing commercials and talking to drivers and. And, you know, kill, well, I mean, why are we killing all these laps? If you're going to insist on these stages, uh, let's not count those laps as you're puttering around doing nothing. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. You know, it's like my fantasy league today, my fantasy league. The numbers that I look at, I don't see very often. 17, 47, 20, 14, and 5, and I put 3 in the garage. I can't. Uh, I can't imagine. You know, Stenhouse is a dirt racer, isn't he? And when yeah. he went out for practice, that forty-seven car was a turd. What do you think he's saving something? I don't I know. That Brian, kind of surprised me. Yeah, that surprised me too, Brian. What do you think? I thought he'd be a lot, a lot better here because he's usually a stand on it type guy. I mean, Stenhouse, I knew was a guy you could, you had to somehow try to slow down. He was on the chip all the time. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is, you know, he's a he's an open wheel type guy, and he, primarily open wheel guys. That, that's a lot different. You know, I mean, Kyle Larson's been dabbling with the late model stuff a little bit, so maybe that's why he's able to get his cup stuff a little bit better now because he's, he's used to, you know, racing it because you're, you're going to race that a little bit more like that than you would with a with an open-wheel car. That's the only thing I can figure as to why it wasn't good. Or JTD Jordy just didn't have any idea of what they were doing to try to get that car somewhat set up for him. I don't know. Um, and then there was one segment yesterday where I was listening to Harvick, and uh, uh, Timmy said to him, well, they're all running the bottom. And Harvey came back, music to my ears. Uh, hey, it had nothing you... to do with getting up against that wall. <laughs> Did you see there was a little bit of a, a meeting amongst the uh, Gibbs drivers? Uh, Kyle and Truex and, and Denny Hamlin all got together with Bell, and they walked out onto the racetrack, and they had Bell explain what they were looking at and what it meant and where they should probably, what's, what's a good line and all that other sort of thing, uh, just among their drivers yesterday. Not a surprise. If you're going to have one of the best dirt racers in the business on your team, uh, there's a good way to take advantage of them. Hey? Well, think of all those guys that were going to run the truck race for experience and to get some laps on the dirt. And now they're going to run that race after the cup race. That really kind of went out the window there as far as getting an experience. If yep. they got the cup race in and uh, some semblance of being on time, uh, they said uh, the trucks are rescheduled for tonight at 8 o'clock Central Time. Um, I, I just can't help but think it's going to be a stretch to get a 250-mile race in on this mud hole uh, in time for that. Um, and there just may be a chance that one of the other races is going to get pushed to tomorrow, probably the trucks, probably tomorrow morning. Now, that's just a guess. Everything is uh, right now up in the air. We're going to have to look at, at how long it's going to rain, uh, how quickly the track drains, how quickly they can get it in shape to, to race on. And uh, all that sort of thing. So, and then a 250 lap. A very fluid situation. A fluid. That's what's caused this whole mess. Very fluid situation. And and with the trucks not running heat races, that that left Ryan Newman on the outside looking in. He was supposed to run the truck race. He can't race it. Jessica Friesen, that's um, used to be How about that? Yeah, Jessica Zemkin, who was a good sprint car racer back in the day, Stewart's wife, she was supposed to race in it. She can't because she was knocked out. And then uh, two other guys, Trevor Collis and J.R. Hefner. Both won't be able to run the truck race today. J.R. Hefner destroyed his truck in practice. I don't yeah, know if you saw yeah, that. He, he hit the inside wall pretty hard. He wasn't. He was done after that. 
Um, after the uh, the next break, we've got a, a treat for everyone uh, listening in uh, the Milwaukee area. We're going to have uh, the one and only candidate for the t- uh, 2021 Kowicki program, uh, who is going to be a regular at the Slinger Speedway this year. He's the track champion up at uh, State Park Speedway in Wausau. His name is Luke Fenhaus. He is a name that you are going to hear for many, many years. And uh, he is a, a, a small family-owned team. He's uh, he's doing it with his own team. And this kid has some talent like you can't believe. And we're going to be lucky enough to see him at Slinger Speedway this year. And uh, he'll be joining us from his family's Easter vacation in Florida when we come back. Uh-oh. What happened? Continue on. All right. Something happened. Maybe Matt had a heart attack. I don't know. Oh, look. There we go. There we go. It's a white and blue weekend of family fun as Road America hosts the NASCAR Cup Series July 1st through the 4th in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Four huge days of stock cars featuring the NASCAR Cup, Henry 180 Xfinity, and Trans Am Series. Camp on site and catch every lap. Enjoy fan activities including autograph sessions and free family fun zone. And free admission for you 16 and under. Get your printed home tickets today before they sell out at RoadAmerica.com. That's RoadAmerica.com. Come for the experience. Stay for the race. Road America, your national park of speed. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. The herd. The winner in this is also Colin Cowherd. We love to blame coaches, and we love to blame quarterbacks. Yesterday was lousy GMing, and right, that was lousy GMing. Like this is the worst literal fit, and Matt Nagy's going to lose his job over this, and he can come. This is the herd, and the story out today. Weekdays after eleven on the Big Nine Twenty and Big Nine Twenty dot com. Now, just uh, I'm just making sure that we have our caller <clears throat> on the line. Sometimes we have to make sure things. Uh, Matt, uh, are we are we good to go? No. We're not good to go yet. Okay, <clears throat> something happened there. Well, we we, we are in the process of um, uh, getting a hold of Luke Fenhaus uh, right now. So um, uh, caught us a little off guard, but that's okay. Um, I like the fact that NASCAR <clears throat> is flexible. If there's one thing NASCAR isn't, is flexible. And today, they they looked at tire wear and decided to change all the stages and everything. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah they always, they, they kind of have been pretty good as far as going on the fly lately. I think, you know, they're kind of out of their ways that way. Whereas before, they were kind of setting their ways and wouldn't change things. And now they're more open to that. And it, that's a good deal going forward. And it looks like... Uh, it looks like we have our guest now. All right. Thank goodness for that. All right. Joining us from his family's uh, vacation for spring break down in Pensacola, Florida, uh, the uh, one and only candidate from the state of Wisconsin in the 2021 Kowicki program, uh, Luke Fenhouse of Wausau, Wisconsin. Luke, for the first time, welcome to Let's Talk NASCAR. Great to have you on the show. Hey, Todd. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm really glad that you guys chose me to be on today's episode, so thanks for having me. All right. Now, you're in uh, Pensacola. You just down for the week? Uh, yeah, Friday to Friday. Oh, very nice. Got to get some sun. We got to. <laughs> it's about that time that you got to do that sort of thing. Uh, I had that right. Um, uh, am I right that you are the, the uh, defending champion at State Park Speedway in Wausau? Uh, well, we won the championship when I was 14 years old, so that was two years ago. So not the defending oh. time, but... Okay. Former champion. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And you started racing all over the place, including, thank- thankfully, uh, at Slinger Speedway, where we got a chance to see you a couple of times, and then in the Nationals, where you finished third. Surprise! 
the first time I remember seeing Luke on the racetrack was I saw this black four car coming from the back of the front. I said, what is that black four car? Where did he come from? Where is that car from? Yeah, well, it's not going to be such a surprise this year. Um, you seem to have taken to the Slinger Speedway rather quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we for sure have. We, we've we got a great setup there that's been going on. Um, you know, I got, I got used to that place really quick, and, um, you know, we're just going to continue to grow and hopefully win some races there this year. No, you know, uh, go ahead, Brian, or, or Dan. You know, Luke, Luke uh, not many people I know of just show up at Slinger Speedway out of the box and run as well as you did. I mean, it was, you, you turned a lot age. of heads, you know, especially at, at your age that way. I guess my question is, mm-hmm. what did you do to prepare for coming there? Did you, did you talk to some people? Did you, did you look at some other setups or, or how did you, uh, what did you guys use for as a baseline to kind of figure out how to get around Slinger? Yeah, um, I talked a little bit with Ty, um, Ty Majeski. Um, he's helped me out really early in my super late model years, so he's been a huge help to my career. Um, and then also just um, watching videos from past Slinger Nationals. Um, with Damn, Ty that's Kent you! And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mark yep. Gale did all the um, filming for that, so that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, so um, just watching videos and, and seeing where Ty's best at, um, you know, that's the man to beat around, across the country, I think. So, um, you know, to beat him and to run with him, that was that was pretty cool in Slinger Nationals. So um, I try to just learn off him and go off based off him and videos. So, yeah. At what age did you start running, Luke, and how did you progress? How fast did you progress from each division to a division? Uh, I started racing age four i think yeah each four or five oh, um so yeah i've been around it for a long time um but uh, you know early starting it was difficult and i was just going based off my dad and my cousin um but once i started to get the hang of it and started to win some races and started um to run dirt and go-karts and mandaleros um you know i got the feel of more of the race car and more of a feeling of winning and that's when I really progressed and wanted to do it more. And then you were winning races regularly at age 14, right? Yeah. Yep. 14 in the super late model was my first year. Yep. Good God. That's, uh, that, that's pretty, um, even nowadays, you know, you got guys that are 14 that, that once in a while will jump in a, in a super late, but it's very rare to have them actually, uh, win anything. And here you are 16 years old, going to turn 17 in a few days. You'll be 17 for this season at Slinger Speedway. Um, and mm-hmm. you know, in your uh, last race last year, you were able to run down, uh, leader Steve Apel under green and pass him. You've got a really good car and a good, uh, whatever, who's ever helping you. They're doing something right. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, like you said, running down April, that was by far probably my biggest win. Um, you know, it was it was cool to run third and second to Casey Johnson and Ty in the Slinger Nationals, but um, you know, to run down track champion Steve April was, I mean, he's one of the best there too. So he's uh, he's pretty good there, and it, it was fun to run with him, and and hopefully we can do it more this year. What kind of chassis do you run? Uh, Fury. Okay, and same how, as long April. Been, how long? Yeah, same. How long have you been in the Fury car? Um, just this past year, just this last year. Okay. Oh, wow. Now you're coming down every week from Wausau. You're gonna, you're gonna, you plan on doing that this year to run the Slinger uh, schedule. So I mean, it's a little bit of a haul for you guys, but uh, it's on the uh, on your plans, isn't it? Yeah, it for sure is. It's gonna be tough. Hopefully, we can get a Slinger sponsor to make it a little bit easier. Um, you know, traveling down two hours um, each Sunday night. But, you know, we're dedicated to win. We're dedicated to go for a championship, and uh, we're going to try our best at it. Uh, where well, are you? There's, in- a young, there's a young fellow right there, if you heard it, looking okay. for a sponsor for the Slinger Nash, for the Slinger season. Boy, get on this bandwagon. You'll be happy. Luke, are you, uh, are you, are you in your senior year? Uh, junior, junior, your junior in high school. And, uh, yep. what a resume already It's That's pretty spectacular. <laughs> I'm blown away. Um, so, uh, from the first time we race, uh, super lates, which should be, uh, what the middle of May, uh, in the afternoon, you will be there every week. Yep. Correct. All right, Luke, we're certainly yeah. looking forward to it. If somebody yeah, wants to, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> 
it's gonna be fun watching you know go for this Kaliki cup championship thing too with that Kaliki development program i mean wins and 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 performances count and and i think uh you got a good shot at getting some wins this year yeah hopefully we can do our best at that you know singer was probably our best track all year um so we're looking forward to get some wins there and and help promote the kddp and and do well there we got some good um community service on board ideas so um you know we got a lot of things planned we got a lot of races this year um you know so i'm super excited for it if somebody wants to sponsor luke fenhouse at the slinger speedway uh trying for a national championship in the kawiki driver development program how would they get a hold of you i mean contact luke fenhouse racing on facebook um you know, that's what I would do. Our Twitter, Luke Fennels Racing. Our website, Luke Fennels Racing. So, um, you know, there's many ways to, to kind of get us out there and catch us. Um, but, you know, we love a sponsor for Slinger Speedway. There you go. He's going to be 17 years old on April the 8th, and he's going to be a regular at Slinger this year. Luke, best of luck to you. Thanks for uh, taking time out of your family vacation. Go jump in the Gulf of Mexico and have a good time, and we'll see you in a few short weeks. Thank you, guys. I'm really looking forward to this year. Thank you. All right. Luke Fenhouse of Wausau, Wisconsin. We'll be back right after these. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's sales and service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's sales and service, 920-994-4358. It's a red, white, and blue weekend of family fun as Road America hosts the NASCAR Cup Series July 1st through the 4th in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Four huge days of stock cars featuring the NASCAR Cup, Henry 180 Xfinity, and Trans Am Series. Camp on site and catch every lap. Enjoy fan activities including autograph sessions and free family fun zone. And free admission for you 16 and under. Get your printed home tickets today before they sell out at RoadAmerica.com. That's RoadAmerica.com. Come for the experience. Stay for the race. Road America, your national park of speed. Spring is in the air, and PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need. With fresh mulch arriving daily, from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to enviro mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years, PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. It's Bristol. Start your engine! And it's on dirt. Is it going to be wet and fast? Is it going to be slick and slow? It's hard to really make any predictions. Uh, so many unknowns. You know, I think it's going to be a little bit of a wild card for everybody. It's going to be different and unique, something totally different. So it's going to be a fun weekend regardless of how it goes. It's going to be incredible. Cup Cars on Dirt. All the action today, starting at 1.30 on Milwaukee's home for NASCAR, the Big 920 and Big920.com. An hour presents Dirt on the Dirt with Brian Schmidt. <laughs> wow, like the, that was cool. Wow, it's like the Westwood One guy. It, uh, it is. Nice. Okay, yes, there is dirt racing other than just Bristol uh, this week. We'll start Friday night up in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. The Williams Grove Speedway. 410 sprint cars were up there. Justin Peck was your winner. And the super late models, I don't know if anybody caught the video of that. Um, one of the Bernheisel kids, Brian Bernheisel, they are the people that make uh, laser chassis, in the heat race, went into turn number one and flipped over 
the guardrail landing outside. They thought he was okay at the time. It turns out he's not. He has a, uh, broken pieces of his neck and his back. So <clears throat> thoughts and prayers are out to him. Hopefully he gets himself healed up sooner than later. Max Blair actually won that race. Over in Tulare, California, the Thunderbolt Raceway, the USAC CRA <clears throat> 410 non-wing sprints. Max Adams was your winner. In the 360s, it was Dominic Selzy. In Humboldt, Kansas, <clears throat> the USMTS Modified King of Americas was there. Night number one, 5,000 to win for the Modifieds. Carlos Armada Jr. was your winner of 91 Modifieds that were there. They had 83 B mods there, and Wisconsin's Tony Barr picked up the win there. Tony Barr used to race with soda late models in the western part of the state. That was yeah. a QQ car, right? Yes, yep. it's the QQ sport mod that won there, so <laughs> impressive victory there. Gaffney, South Carolina, Friday night. The Morton Building's World of Outlaw late models were there. The Rock Galt Memorial. They had twin 5,000 win features to set up Saturday night's 40,000 a winner. Jimmy Owens won one of the features. And Brandon Shepard picked up his first feature win of the year. It took until March 26th for him to win his first feature, but he did. He won feature number two. Funny how that goes in streaks sometimes. Yes, right? it is. Especially Davenport a team like won that. a couple of years ago. He won everything, and then it took some time off. Shepard's yep. back quickly. Yep. So the 40,000 to win race was supposed to be run last night in Gaffney. That rained out. So the uh, Morton Buildings World of All the Late Models moved to Farmer City, Illinois. Dan and I will be going down there on Friday to check that race out. Uh, one of the bigger events of the year in the state of Illinois is next weekend. Peoria, Arizona last night, the Canyon Speedway and the Super Late Models. It was Minnesota's Don Shaw picking up the win in the modified Anthony Madrid. He also won the stock car feature. Night number two at Tulare, California for the CRA 410 non-wing sprints. Damian Gardner was your winner. In the 360s, it was Dominic Selzy again. Port Royal, Pennsylvania in the 410 sprints. Dylan Snisney was your winner. He's driving a car owned by Wisconsin's Scotty Coleman. Scotty Coleman always had like the pit stop pizza car that ran the uh, IRA 410 sprints. If you remember that, I think Mike Kircher or uh, uh, a couple of different guys uh, ran that car over the year. Um, that car is now running out, out in the Pennsylvania area, and the guy won the feature with it. In the super late models, Jeff Ryan was your winner over Rick Eckert. Union, Kentucky, the Florence Speedway 5,000 win for the UMP late models. Josh Rice was your winner over Tyler Erb, and Scott James finished third. The final night of the King of Americas in Humboldt, Kansas, $20,000 to win for the USMTS Modifieds. And Brooks Strength was your winner, a guy I never heard of before, but he was a rookie that picked up the win. They also ran a makeup program in the afternoon from Thursday's race. That was 2000 to win. Lucas Schott won that. And finally, last night in Eldon, Missouri, at the Lake of the Ozarks Speedway for the World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Car Series, it was the Jason Johnson Classic, an event that pays tribute to Jason Johnson, who was tragically killed here a couple years ago in Beaver Dam. 15000 to win, and Brad Sweet picked up the win. Our own Scotty Thiel from right here in Sheboygan went down there. He made the show. It was a very rough track, so he uh, he pulled off early, but still finished the feature 22nd. You know, that the the guy in that uh, little intro for you, uh, I, I, he is the Westwood One guy. I, I recognize his voice. He used yeah. to do a, 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 a spot for racing. It's If you remember, he'd say, we'll sell you the whole seat, but Jim you'll only need, need the edge. edge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty cool. Hey, it's not going to take too long to tell you about the world of asphalt. Uh, Corey Heim won the Southern Super Series uh, opener at the Watermelon Capital Speedway in Cordell, Georgia. Uh, of course, Corey Heim was the same guy that uh, was your uh, Daytona ARCA winner earlier this year. Um, the other news uh, comes from uh, Wisconsin Dells. Uh, the track, uh, the Dells track had been owned by Wayne Lensing. He had purchased it from Joe Graziano, a couple of guys from Illinois. It's been purchased now by uh, a guy from the state of Wisconsin, Jerry Albee, who has been running the racetrack the last couple of years and had leased it from Lensing, uh, completed his purchase of the Dells racetrack this week. So, um, uh, Sun Prairie's own Jerry Alby, the new owner up at Dells Raceway Park. Uh, congratulations, best of luck, and uh, um, a good place, great place to go see a race. You got to support that place and keep uh, keep it going. And um, how about the new sponsor for the Slinger Nationals? Did you see that? I did. I didn't write it down, Dan, and I'm sure you did. Yeah, Supply Zone and Webam. That's the the Stefano's company. They're going to take over the title sponsorship of the Nationals this year. Uh, oh. I think that'd be a pretty big deal. Yeah. You know, Wabam! Uh, they actually did a race uh, earlier uh, or last season, if I remember right, too. So yeah, that's pretty cool. The De Stefanos stepping up to the plate, pretty great, and uh, and uh, glad all the way to hear it all the way around, no doubt about it. And that's all we have. 
uh, <laughs> for uh, results from uh, asphalt. Not not much going on yet, but it's not going to take long, and it's going to get started. That's for sure. We will uh, sneak away and do a break and, uh, and do some more Bristol when we come back. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs. All backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company in the heart of Wisconsin is outfitted with the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at Wagner Automotive it's a red, white, and blue weekend of family fun as Road America hosts the NASCAR Cup Series July 1st through the 4th in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Four huge days of stock cars featuring the NASCAR Cup, Henry 180 Xfinity, and Trans Am Series. Camp on site and catch every lap. Enjoy fan activities including autograph sessions and free family fun zone and free admission for you 16 and under. Get your printed home tickets today before they sell out at RoadAmerica.com. That's RoadAmerica.com. Come for the experience. Stay for the race. Road America, your national park of speed. This, keep it on the down low here, is the Dan Patrick Show. If I'm a Bears fan, I'd rather have not gone through this that Russell Wilson was considering. I'd rather that I didn't know that to then have this. Because if you're a Bears fan, you realize chances are nobody wants the quarterback you have. You get quarterbacks that nobody else wants. Dan Patrick. The Dan Patrick Show. Weekdays after 8 on the Big 920 and Big920.com. What a race at Atlanta last week. Boy, Kyle Larson thought he had that in the bag. Everybody thought he had that in the bag. There's only one thing. He was good for about 25 laps, and most of the cautions seemed to come up. They changed tires after 25 laps. Why did anybody think it would be such a good idea to try and make the last set of tires last for 62 laps? Because it didn't work out, and Ryan Blaney passed Kyle Larson and won his first race of the year. <laughs> I don't think lap traffic had anything to do with that. It took him a long time to get around Joey Logano, and I think if Logano would have let him by, he would have had a better shot of doing it. But, you know, Joey did what he had to do, and, and you know, he, he didn't race him dirty. He just made it a little difficult. He didn't move over for him. There you go. Ed, why, why would they have not tr- stopped for tires after 30 laps? He had such a big lead, and his crew chief kept telling him that take care of his equipment so he'd have something at the end. But his lap times weren't slowing down any. All right. Um, Hey, we had a a caller that left a message here. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, Ed. Uh, Can can between you and Brian give a little explanation of the difference in the way a car is set up between asphalt and dirt? Go ahead, Brian. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. If he means what are they doing to the asphalt car to set it up for the dirt, that I really don't know. But yeah, I mean, a dirt a dirt car is completely different. I mean, like a dirt late model, for instance, has got you know the rear suspension can move forward and back and side to side. It's got a lift bar. It's got a panart bar. It's got you know it, it's it's completely different and wild. Um, uh, Ed, what are they doing to these cup cars? Anything in particular? Well, there's they no splitter, right? The... Yeah, no splitter. right. There's no splitter, right, Ed? They took that off. I mean, that's one yeah, thing. Yeah, there's no splitter. Just to keep it out there, but. To make the front end more compliant with as far as the lockdown and the shocks are a big key. The change they would make in the chassis would be how compliant the shocks are for the dirt to plant that six, 750 horsepower to the ground is going to be quite difficult. So you do things to try and increase forward bite and, and uh, make the car more compliant. Man. Interesting. A lot, lot going on there. Hey, uh, 
normally I wouldn't pay very much attention to iRacing, but one of the uh, iRaces that they're doing is uh, on the streets of Chicago, and suddenly somebody came up with this, uh, I don't know if it's an idea or a rumor or just a bunch of BS like a lot of stuff is, but they thought this might be a precursor to a possible street race in downtown Chicago. Is that possible? Boy, I hope not. <laughs> you know, and, and the first thing that comes to my mind, you know, because that's up here in the Midwest is, boy, you hope that doesn't come at the expense of the race at Road America, which hopefully we blow the crowd out of the park this year and it's such a raising success they won't even think about taking it away. But, I mean, Dan, they couldn't get anybody to go to the Oval at Chicago. What makes them think you could go that's, and sit in the streets of Chicago? Yeah, that's what I thought about that, too. It's Okay, it's a nice novel idea to talk about now, but I can't really see that. If it does happen, I don't think the people in Chicago would like it. They didn't support the Oval. They weren't really a racing crowd there, especially not downtown. I mean, the street races closed down downtown streets for a while, and, and you know, race fans might think it's cool, but the people live around there and use it every day, they, I don't think that they're happy with that, and I, I just can't see that happening. And Chicago is a big enough nightmare to try to get around in a normal traffic. Now shut roads down. That's you make it worse, you know? So, oh, man. Say, uh, we mentioned earlier in the program that the, the trucks, uh, if everything went perfectly and, and God knows nothing's going right at all, uh, but they're trying to get the truck race in after the cup race tonight. There will be a time when they're going to have to come out and regrade the track and get it all ready, assuming that we're going to get it in without any more rain. That's another thing we have to cross our fingers on. But one of the the novelties about the, the uh, truck race, uh, after the cup race, Christopher Bell more than likely would have just left and gone back home. But he's going to hang on, and he's going to be uh, on call to replace John Hunter Nemechek, whose wife could go into labor at any minute. And Christopher Bell is the standby for for uh, John Hunter Nemechek, I you get the feeling everybody's rooting for the baby right now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's see Christopher Bell in one of these trucks. That'd be awesome. Um, wh- how many of the Cup guys that were planning on being in the truck race are still going to be in the truck race, Brian? I don't even know if you have that information. Kyle Larson. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's every it's everybody with the exception of Ryan Newman because Ryan Newman is the only one that wasn't. Uh, points. Was in a, yeah, it wasn't a truck that didn't have any points. I think it's it's uh, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson, Bubba Wallace, Truex, Martin Truex is in the 51, I think. Yep, I got the starting lineup here in front of me now. So we have, uh, uh, let's see here. Yeah, we have uh, Bubba Wallace, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson, Daniel Suarez. Uh, who else is in here from the hmm. Parker, well, Parker Clip? Martin Truex Jr. Um yeah, that's, another that's race. I mean, it's uh, it's an uh, there's a, there's like six cup guys going to be in that race. It's going to make it very Chase interesting. Chase Briscoe. Yep. Briscoe yeah. is uh, the guy. Wasn't he a dirt guy? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's a sprint yeah. car guy. Yeah. I would think his name would have been kicked around more seriously today, but uh, uh, it seems like things aren't what they were over at uh, Tony Stewart's race team over there. Stewart Haas Racing is is uh, starting the season off a little slow, would you say? Very on slow. <laughs> on the asphalt side, we'll see about on the dirt today. I mean, it's I, I, I have Chase Briscoe in my fantasy lineup. Hmm. The one guy that's loving that the heat races were probably canceled from the truck side of thing is probably our own Derek Krause. He was supposed to start dead last in his heat race. He doesn't have a whole lot of truck, you know, dirt experience. Dirt experience. And now that they have these other lineups, he gets to start 12th. So he's probably liking the fact that they didn't run E-races. How about Johnny starting top five on a dirt track? There we go. Give him hell, Johnny. (laughs) That's beautiful. When they do race, I'd I'd say Matt Crafton's going to be right up there. Matt Crafton's put a, you know, he won a dirt race at at, uh, Eldora a few years back. He's put a lot of time in. He's been running his modified quite a bit, and now he gets to start fourth. So if you're looking you know, for a guy on the truck series side who people don't think is a dirt racer, I would say Matt Kraft. All right, quickly, I'm taking the 48 card today. Ed, who do you got? Taking a five. Ah, uh, simple. All right, Daniel. Here comes one out of nowhere. Surprise, y'all. 22. Yeah, right. I know. He looked pretty good, didn't he, Brian? I'm taking the 20, Christopher Bell. Why not? I... Um, I like what it, you know, that 48 car, that kid races on, on dirt and he looks pretty good when he does. So 
Yeah, what the hell? It's just a shot like Dan's, you know? Who knows? You never can tell. Thanks for tuning in. We're excited, but uh, it's gonna, it might be a long day and a long night, and you might be watching this tomorrow, so set your DVRs before you go to work. Check local listings, blah, blah. And remember, real race cars have windshields, even if they can't see through them. Let's talk NASCAR is produced and directed by Dangerous Dan Margetta, our in-house engineer, website coordinator, and king of the knobs is Matt Hangover Losey for all of us involved. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week, everybody. This program has come to you live from multiple locations via Skype. Any and all comments expressed on this show do not necessarily express the opinions of this station, its employees, or advertisers. Your comments are always welcome at mail at ltnradionetwork.com. Find us at facebook.com slash ltnradionetwork. And thank you for your support since 1985. Tune in again next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time for the LTN Hour on the LTN Radio Network.